There's a local myth about the Wattington White Mark, but does it stand up to any scrutiny? Watch this to find out. So, Headley, what do we know about this 190 foot high chalk white mark on the hill above the town of Watlington? Well, at the moment, uh, not a lot, but hopefully this video will explain more. Uh, I want to find out how it relates to the, the residents who live in the town at the bottom. What, that lot in the town of Watlington down there? <laughs> yeah, that lot. <laughs> I used to be one of those. They're a funny old lot. Let's go and find out. Okay, so those residents that Headley mentioned seem to believe in one long-running origin story for the Watlington White Mark, and that's what we're subjecting to the scrutiny of a Headley Thorn investigation here. A number of us think that Headley should get into weekly YouTube uploads, and this is our attempt to make him do that. Uh, this investigation is 100% Headley's, researched and scripted by the boss himself. We're really pleased to provide the resources to facilitate Headley's dream free of charge. Headley's mission is to utilise the modern resources of Google, tablets, iPhones, teenage dependents and of course his massive drone Alfred to challenge and solve the mysteries of the past. It's nice, uh, Headley, being back in Watlington. I lived here for had ten very uh, happy years here. Do, do, I can't remember. Do you live in Watlington? No, I, I, I don't live in Watlington. No, I live uh, in the the splendid rural charms of Didcot. Didcot? <laughs> yes. So let's have a think about it. It's it's not a white horse. It's not. Uh, a white cross on the foothills. It's just this slender triangle. So it was far less, you know, work designing something like that. And it's low down the hill as well. So perhaps it's just an estate marker. And in a jarring edit cut, we're now at the bottom of the Watlington white mark. And of course here, looking across the landscape, we don't know again what it was. Another theory is maybe it related to the other white crosses further along the Chilton Scarp at Bledlow and at Whiteleaf. And of course, the ridgeway is running just along the bottom here. So naturally, people say that it might have been a fertility symbol, you know, the phallus thing going on again, that was then later uh, tidied up and made decent uh, by the Christians. Yeah, but my favourite theory is actually relating to an eccentric landowner who lived just down there. The views from Watlington Hill are fantastic. You can see all along the Chiltern escarpment and out across the lowlands as well um, to Oxford itself. But there is something a little bit odd about the placing of this particular white mark. It's quite low down on the hill. Looking across YouTube, it doesn't look like anyone's had the free time, the equipment uh, or the blatant stupidity until us, until us uh, to look into this interesting theory about the eccentric local landowner or the the modern disregard for blatant trespass laws what you didn't say anything about that to me suck it up buttercup we're stood just below the white mark but to look further into the theory about this eccentric landowner we need to go down into the town to the church because i hear there's something wrong with it this is the beautiful St. Leonard's Church in Watlington. And of course, it has the obligatory yew tree. It's a fine church with uh, many outstanding features. And Headley is keen for me to share some of those uh, with you. I'm going to refer to the notes uh, for that. It consists of a four bay nave, an aisle, a chancel and a chapel in Flint rubble with limestone ashlar coins, whatever that means. And uh, the limestone ashlar tower is at the west end and it dates back to the 15th century. <coughs> and it's here at the tower that we have the problem. 
And as you can see, it doesn't have a spire. And for some people, that was just a little bit too common. Local rumour has persisted for many years that eccentric squire Edward Horn had the triangular white mark cut into Watlington Hill back in 1764 because he was displeased that he didn't have a view of the church from his manor with a spire. Local folklore, and I can vouch for that because I lived in Watlington, as I may have mentioned earlier, has it that rather than pay for the construction of a spire onto the church, Edward Horn arranged for a spire-shaped chalk mark to be carved into Watlington Hill, such that it would line up and give the appearance that the church has a spire. And this is where it gets really exciting and professional. We're going to cut over to Headley at Watlington Manor, and I'm sure he's going to be able to confirm that he's got a fantastic view of the church from over there, lined up with that white mark, giving the illusion of a church spire. So with Darren down at the church, I've come up to where the manor is uh, to try and check out the view to see whether or not it is actually a spire. The problem is, I can't get into the manor. And the other problem is this, we're up on the hill behind where the, uh, the chalk mark is. And so there's no line of sight with the town, the hill or anything. So if people are saying that Edward Horn built the, uh, the white mark to look like a spire, it's not looking good, is it? <sighs> Do you want the good news or the bad news? I want the good news. The good news is that for some of the walk back here, the sun came out. And the bad news? The bad news, I'm afraid, is that none of it aligns up. So the manor house is all the way up on the hill behind the white mark, or at least the other side of it in a sense. So if you were looking at a map, for example, you would see the order being the church, the white mark, and then the manor house. And so it just doesn't line up. And so, to be honest with you, I think we've pretty much quashed this local rumor. Don't be so defeatist uh, and sad, uh, Headley. Uh, show me what you mean. OK, so we're here at the church. Uphill on the hill to the east, roughly, is the white mark. But the manor is down here, when we'd expect it to line up and be over here to the west somewhere. Maybe there's another manor in Watlington. There are no other manors in Watlington. I've got to be honest, Headley was absolutely fuming. It had been his dream to bring the first ever telephoto zoom alignment of the white mark as a spire for the church, as viewed from Edward Horne's house uh, on YouTube. But the problem was, the house is behind the blooming hill. But it's not just the locals who have left this story to go unchallenged for decades. A simple Google search on Watlington Hill white mark resulted in seven page one results recounting the very same story. And that included so-called experts like the National Trust and mainstream media mainstay, the BBC. Headley, let's uh, go back to the map. Let's draw a line from the Watlington White Mark out here to St Leonard's Church and then extend it beyond that no, we, and we, see what happens. No, we've been through this. There are no other manor houses in or around Watlington. No, let's really extend it out and see where we end up. Right, so where are we now? Instead of having a cup of tea at home, you've taken us to a field in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, so we've drawn a line straight out from the White Mark uh, to the church and then taken that out uh, across the open countryside. So we're on the lowland plain here and we've landed at a place called Cut Mill. Uh, and Hang on, a mill? A mill, yes, Cut Mill. Uh, but a little bit of research has shown us that that was part of the manorial lands of Watlington Manor, owned, owned by, by Edward, Edward Horn. Horn. Right, so you probably now want me to get my big drone up in the sky, don't Absolutely, you? Absolutely, Headley, it's time to get it up. Let's go and see if it's worked. Headley, Headley, has it worked? Does Cut Mill line up with the church 
and the uh, Spire and the white mark. Do you want the good news or the bad news? Always the good news for me. Well, okay, the good news is, as we can put on screen now, it does line up. Fantastic. The problem is, as you can probably see on the screen, is that there's a gap between the spire and the church, and that's because we have another hill in the way. Ah. And no old properties between here and there. Well, um, you know, this is the thing with local folklore. We had sort of hoped that we'd find a property that was owned by Edward Horne, where this optical illusion of the church having a spire could be seen from. But, nonetheless, we're on land that may well have been part of that uh, manor, and the, the sort of illusion mm. can be achieved. So have we missed something? Is there a property around here that belonged to Edward Horne that we haven't covered or we don't know about? Have we missed any bits of information? This was not a pretty end to the day and uh, Headley was absolutely furious. Cut Mill was just too far away for the alignment to, to work. And why would Edward Horne want to deliver that view for his miller anyway? It doesn't make any sense. But the next day, the following footage landed in the inbox at WC21 HQ. But wait, there's one more thing. There's one person we haven't talked about yet. The vicar. This is the point on the land where the bottom of the spire touches the church tower. Look at these buildings. So the clip you just saw, we took after we did the rest of the filming yesterday. And that area is known as Glebe Farm. Now, according to british-history.ac.uk, Glebe Farm may have been founded around the time of Edward Horne by the local vicar. So could it be maybe that Edward was doing the vicar a favour? I don't know. Do you know? Answers in the comments below and thank you very much for watching. Okay, so Headley may have failed to find an Edward Horn residence that delivered that pay-off spire shot. And he may have pursued a bit of a wild goose chase at Cut Mill. But the Glebe is absolutely on the right alignment. And we think if we could get into the garden of that, we'd get the spire shot. As Headley has commented, it would be ideal for a vicar's garden tea party. I did try to visit Glebe Farm the following day, uh, but there were security fences and I'm really sorry uh, about making that stupid electronic gate open and triggering the associated alarm systems. Anyhow, Edward Horn may have funded this optical spire illusion, but he didn't do it for himself, he did it for a retired vicar. Back over to the boss. Dad, can I have my money now? You can have your money when you pay rent. I despise teenagers, seriously. Right, at least can we go to McDonald's? I should have just brought a bloody tripod.